talk about my roller bag. Okay, back for part two, let's get right into it. I have the Luggage Works Aurora 22 inch expandable roller bag. As I mentioned in the first movie about my cockpit bag, I like this bag well enough. Before we get too far into the details on this specific bag, I need to explain the primary constraint you have as a pilot, specifically in the Bombardier Canada Regional Jet or CRJ 200, 700, and 900 and that is the overhead compartment space. It's only 10 inches high, making it very important that you get the proper bag. The CRJ series of planes has some of the smallest overhead compartment space, and luckily these bags are designed with the lowest common denominator in mind. So first things first, let's get into how to pack this thing, and there are essentially two basic rules for me that I use when I pack my roller bag. The first is this, just when you think you've packed enough, take one item out of the bag. Believe it or not, this has helped me tremendously. As someone who tends to overpack and definitely did that when I first started working on the line, this little rule helped me a lot. Rule number two is check your schedule when you pack. And I know this might seem like super obvious, however, there's a lot of people that don't actually do this. And the reason I say this is because if you have a four day trip and let's say you have three nights and you're only gonna be in the hotel for 12 hours each night, there's no point in packing anything other than your pajamas and maybe some clothes to work out in. However, if you see that you're gonna have a long overnight in a place like Flagstaff, Arizona, which is where I was a couple weeks ago, then it's very easy to pack something that allows you to be able to travel and see, say, the Grand Canyon. Now allow me to show you how I actually pack my roller bag. And I have both a summer and a winter list of packing items, and I'll show you how we do that. And let's look at the winter list first, and let's assume that we're packing for four days. Right off the bat, you know you'll need three undershirts, three pairs of underwear, and three pairs of socks. That never changes. I pack one pair of shoes to work out in and to walk around in and then I pack one pair of pants, a long sleeve t-shirt or two, and a warm jacket to wear. I just have this North Face jacket that folds into itself. During the fall time, if we're not going anywhere cold, I'll just pack a light jacket or a sweatshirt. That takes care of all the items you'll need if you want to go out. Depending on the schedule, I try to work out at least three times during a four day trip, meaning I just bring three workout shirts, three pairs of workout shorts, and the appropriate underwear. I just cram them into a shoe or roll them into the cracks around the bag because they don't take up much room. I also bring a workout book to try to track my workouts. I'm trying to stay fit on the road and this keeps me accountable. I then pack a pair of shorts and a t-shirt to sleep in. For my toiletries, I use the toiletry bag that came with the Aurora suitcase. It's not bulky, which I really like. I leave some room at the top and lay it as flat as possible. Now during the winter time, I wear a sweater over my uniform shirt. I found that it's very comfortable, looks sharp, and provides just enough warmth that when I'm outside inspecting the plane, it keeps me warm enough. I have a blazer, but I never use it, and I didn't spend the $450 on a leather jacket. The $30 sweater works just fine for me. That being said, I don't bring an additional white uniform shirt in the wintertime. I figure that if I spill something on my sweater, you're not gonna be able to see it like you would on the white shirt, so I just don't bring the extra white shirt with me. Lastly, I bring a beanie cap and a set of black gloves, and that is my winter packing list. For the summer, the undershirts, the underwear, the socks, that all stays the same. I still bring the same shoes and all the same workout gear, and I've just recently started bringing a pair of sandals, which has been really nice to walk around in as opposed to shoes. I still bring my shorts and t-shirt to sleep in. I bring one pair of shorts instead of jeans, two t-shirts, and maybe a sweatshirt if it will be slightly cold. And then I top it off with my toiletry bag. On the outside pocket of the front of the suitcase, I place this extra white shirt, and that's there in case of an emergency, like I spill coffee on my shirt or I get grease on it from you know inspecting the outside of the airplane, something like that. The last of this bag is this little compartment where I put all my dirty clothes. I carry a couple of old grocery bags or take the laundry bags from the hotel and place my dirty clothes in there and then put them in the dirty clothes section. Keep in mind that the more you cram into that little dirty clothes section, the more you're gonna have to actually repack your bag around it. If you were to see my hotel room, especially on a long overnight, my stuff is just everywhere. And that's because I found it's easier just to take it all out and repack it as I'm having to move everything around within the suitcase. Once zipped up, it fits nicely in the overhead compartment. I have this J-hook on the bag as well. Do yourself a favor and get yourself a J-hook when you buy a bag. I just think it's the best. When I put my cockpit bag on the hook, the whole ensemble is perfectly balanced and I can pull the bag easily with two fingers. This is my buddy Carlo Espinoza and he does the same thing with his bag and I'll tell you, he gives it two thumbs up. I've actually had a couple captains tell me that I shouldn't put my headset on the outside of my bag because it just invites people to steal it. And I'm sure there's people watching this who would probably think the exact same thing, but what I'll say is this. 
Everything that I carry with me is like a kleptomaniac's dream. I mean, I've got camera gear, all my computers, uh, I mean, every electronic device that I own almost goes with me. So these bags are never more than three feet from me wherever I'm going, except for when I'm actually flying and I put it in the overhead compartment of the bag. Other than that, the bag's never gone from my side. Also, the flight attendants are generally very good about making sure people don't accidentally or intentionally take your bags out of the overhead compartment when they're getting out of the airplane. I'll also say it's pretty beneficial to have something on the bag that distinguishes it as a crew bag. All of this information is great and accurate, but I do have one change to how I do things. I was on a trip where I actually got to hike up to the Grand Tetons and I knew I wanted to take my camera on this trip. Normally when I take my camera gear with me, I put the body of the camera in a shirt and then put it snugly down into the actual suitcase and then I take a lens and slide it into one of the shoes in order to protect it. The captain I was flying with, who also went on the hike with me, emphasized the point that I should put all of my valuable camera gear, electronic stuff up in the cockpit with me as opposed to keeping it in the bag back in the back where it could potentially be stolen. Now I've known this for a while, but I didn't know how I wanted to accomplish it. If I bring my camera bag, it is far too bulky and I didn't want to spend money on a secondary cockpit bag. But the solution presented itself when I found this little bag in my basement. It's an old camera bag and I can actually slide my entire camera down in it, put my headset on top, and then on the side I can put a GoPro. On the opposite side I can put this cool little light. And then in this front pocket I can actually put my shotgun mic. I put this piece of paracord or 550 cord or whatever you want to call it on the back of it to fashion this little handle which then slides around the actual handle of my roller bag and keeps everything nice and secure. And that is the solution for how I can bring my camera gear, electronic gear, headset, and all that up to the cockpit with me. Back to our normal program. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is why I chose this bag, and especially as opposed to the metal frame bags that I would say a majority of pilots use. First off is the price. The Aurora bag, relatively speaking, is much cheaper than the uh, more expensive metal framed bags. The second was the expandability option of the bag. It's no secret that when you work for an airline you get to travel for free, and I really envisioned that as a family we would travel more, and I like the option of being able to expand my bag a little bit when I went on personal trips. I will tell you I have learned to just pack less, and honestly, I never expand the bag. I mean, hardly ever at all. I also like my bag because it's lighter than the metal frame bags, but I think that is at the expense of durability. I just don't think that mine would last nearly as long as something like this. And then lastly, specifically with my bag, I worry about this handle. The handle is aluminum, and my cockpit bag is very heavy, and so I'm always afraid that this thing is eventually just gonna break. So all in all, what I would say is, if I were to go back and do it again, I would spend a little bit more money on a much more durable bag, ideally, a metal framed bag. I do like my bag, I've gotten used to my bag, I'm in no hurry to get rid of my bag, but I don't think it's gonna last nearly as long as one of these other ones. Okay, that's it. That's part two of how to pack a bag as an airline pilot. I'll link the part one in the description below. If you haven't watched it, go take a look if you're interested. Hopefully this helps. Uh, don't know if I'm gonna be making any other videos about any other topics. We shall see. Maybe next time. Maybe not. See ya.